Well, I'm about to show you what the worst kind of luck you can have in a laser display that had nothing to do with my fault. And I might be rough with things once in a while, but I've never been, I don't be considered a little careless of my laser disc. I tend to leave them out of the plastic because I figure by the time they rot away, whatever happens to them, it'll be long beyond my time. If you, as long as you don't throw them at the wall or scratch them up or do anything, leaving them and you don't store them in the wrong conditions, I don't think those little plastic sleeves are going to make any difference. I don't mind the paper ones that you put them in. Those are real easy. It's these plastic ones. Now, a while back, right around when I first bought World Is Not Enough, it got stuck in one of my Laserdisc players. Um, I put it in, I clicked play, all of a sudden I heard... It was like a weird, really loud noise. It was rumbling. I, I couldn't stop it, first of all. There was, no matter what I played pushed on the laser display, nothing responded. So I had to unplug the laser display and plug it back in. And then I got an error symbol on the laser display. Then I had to, um, um, eventually I got it to, um, it, it, I guess it reset itself. It did something and then ejected the disc and the disc was scuffed pretty heavily too. But at the same time, I had the most luck. Why? Because the world is not enough, still plays perfectly, even with this kind of damage, which proves laser discs is more resilient to scratches and any kind of scuffs than a DVD would. If this happened to a DVD, it would have been totaled. It wouldn't have even played again. Let me show you now. Um, this is, well, I'll show you first what it's, what a laser disc is supposed to look like. I don't know if you can tell from this camera, but I'll try to show the best. This is, um, part three of World Is Not Enough. I don't know if you can tell. It's really hard to see any scratches with this shitty camera. But this is the third, on one side of the World Is Not Enough. And this is, um, you can't really tell anything. Okay, so this is the good side. That's side three, no cracks, nothing. Good condition, maybe a few scratches on one side. We know how expensive this laser disc is. You have to be very careful not to like mess it up or anything. I don't even think these plastic things make much of a difference, but I guess I'll take the extra precaution of using it only on important discs though. See? You gotta be very patient with these. See what I, I almost dropped it. See what I mean? Then I get all nervous that when I um accidentally put them in there, I might crack it or something. But no, everything is fine. Just it's you gotta take a double look at it to make sure. Just to so you put that back in there. Now. This is why I don't like doing this. It's because it's a big pain in the ass. See? I'm not... You know, you've got to put the plastic in just right. Or else it doesn't, um... Whatever. So, it's a little exposed, but... Um, that's just how it is. So now I'm going to put that where it is on World Is Not Enough. In the second tray. Put it in there. Everything's fine. Here's where all the damage occurred, which was on the first disc. And this is why I call this a big pain in the ass. Because first of all, um, nothing I can really do about it. I could finish it up with that polisher, but if the disc plays fine, why even touch the disc and risk damaging it? Or take? Because they said if you polish it too much, you can damage the plastic and stuff. So... The best thing to do is just not touch it at all. Okay, so a little, du a little dusty. Um, let me see here. Well, I think it's a little dusty and scratched, but it still played fine. But see, I'm trying to show you what the, see that? There it is. See all that scuff? Um, let me get. Make sure I get it right. She's. I wanted to show you all the scuffs. I want to make sure I get the right side. 
think side two is the worst. Yeah, side two is the worst. See how this is, is this scuffing? See, you can see it now. All along here. Heavy scuffs, too. Luckily, it didn't touch, really, any of the disc. Well, it did, made it onto the disc over here. This disc still plays fine, despite the scratches and the scuffing that it got from being in the player. And probably a couple of scratches I had of myself trying to get it off. I didn't use any of that alcoholic stuff or whatever that eats away at the um, disc. But the whole point I'm trying to make here is, is that, um, you know, that was the worst luck I ever had with LaserDisc. It's, although it's my favorite disc, I'm afraid to even touch the damn thing. And that's the problem with with laser discs like this. This is the only laser disc I double check all the time to make sure it works. It's just my it's my paranoid feelings get getting in the way of myself when I look at this thing. I just gotta make sure that um nothing's cracked or anything before you mess around with it. And um Make sure nothing's messed up. Now, I don't know why the player must have got misaligned when it was inside when I pressed play, because it's happened once or twice before this. It does. It hasn't happened in a really long time. Usually, it would happen every. Well, it happened a few times, but after this incident, it never happened again. Maybe there was something that was like a little misaligned. Now it's been. Backed, backed into um, to the way the way it's supposed to be. Maybe something was pushed back the way, some pot inside or whatever. But um, that's just that. So I showed you the scuffing, and it's pretty severe. The scuffing is pretty severe, but it's all around the circular area, and it doesn't go more than it's less than a half an inch onto the disc. So the disc plays fine. It just fast forwarded through the entire movie, um, but on all. The, the entire movie on both discs, and it played fine. It was a close call, but who's to say I have a limited lifespan now? Um, they say if these aluminum gets exposed, you know, things can get ruined and stuff like that. I don't know what to occur. And look what also happened. This is my fault, though. I can admit when I'm wrong. There's a crease on this damn thing. Because I swear I stored it, I pulled it out, and I banged it against the thing. Now, that affects definitely... I'm not going to resell any of this stuff, by the way. I, I, I just, you know, you spend so much money on it, you just can't resell it. I'd have to lower the price. This is going for what? 350 to $500? Now it's a little damaged. I could probably get 200 250 for it still, if it works, which it does. I, um, In the condition I just showed you... It plays on three different laser disc plays. A really low end laser disc player, a mid, um, I consider an industrial grade laser disc player. Oh, well, actually, two of them are, and one that has A3, AC3. So that's that. So I'm just trying to prove to people that, you know, this is a problem we have. We just. That, that can't really be solved. There's not much you can do about it. And that's what sucks. You know, I've been... I've been worried about this for a long time. It's like... I don't know what to do. To tell you the truth, I had it stored up there before. If you saw them in former videos, I used to have it on the top of there. But I was afraid it was going to fall. And if it falls and cracks, they said never put a cracked laser disc into your player. Well, I can confirm that you can't play a crack... If it's cracked on one side, you can play it on the other, but it's not a good idea because what if it falls apart inside the player? It could destroy the player. It could destroy everything. So don't do that. That was the only cracked laser disc I have currently in my arsenal of laser discs. Is um, Court Jester. I'm trying to put this back in the plastic thing it was in, and Court Jester is um, cracked. I don't know why I even keep it. I'll show you that in a second. Um, after I get this damn thing in here, I just have to remember that, um, 
Yeah, I, this is the only one I even worry about putting plastic on anymore. All my Deep Space Nine and X-Files, I just took them right out of those plastic sleeves because it was too annoying to get them out of it. And plus, as, as hot as those might be to find, they're not as expensive as this movie. This movie is as, as more expensive than one box set of the most expensive X-Files, if it's in the right condition, which of course, this is really only worth about 200 to 250 now. My own, um, my own, um, what's it called? Um, expertise. Well, I don't know much, but I know enough. So, now I'm going to show you what you shouldn't do and what you shouldn't play. I think I'm just going to throw away this laser disc because I might make the mistake one day of accidentally putting this in my laser disc player. Caught jest. I bought this for a buck, the time capsule, and it was cracked. They're stupid enough to, to accept it. Maybe it broke while they while it was in the shop and someone was looking at it, but I highly doubt that. See? There's a crack right there. Now I played the first side perfectly fine, but when you flip it over, it doesn't even spin. It just gets an error. You should never play this in a player ever. I think I'm going to throw it away because, first of all, um, I have this on VHS somewhere and it's no use keeping something that's cracked because what if I forget about it one day and I put it in my play and something does happen? That's going to be a whole nother thing that I don't want to deal with. Well, that's it. I just wanted to show people that, you know, random accidents can happen in your laser disc player and there's nothing you can do about it. That's the risk you have to take. At least my movie still works. But who's to say in the near future that those scratches um could open up some air pocket inside of one of these things because that's the oxidation or whatever it's called and maybe the laser disc won't work anymore. I may be using the wrong words, but people will will pretty much know what I'm talking about. All right, bye-bye.